Hi folks, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Today our post is about uh, milk intolerance or lactose intolerance. Milk intolerance is pretty common. By default, as human beings, we are made to digest milk in the first year of our life and then we lose the ability to digest milk. Only in about 30% of the population does the ability to digest milk persist into adulthood. So that's an important point, that by default we are not set up to absorb milk. However, there's some varying levels of absorption that we are able to do. The basic mechanism uh, for milk intolerance is that when we take milk, which uh, and the main sugar in milk is lactose, the lactose is then broken into glucose and galactose, two sugars that are then absorbed. The enzyme that's necessary for that is lactase, and that's pretty active when we are born, but we gradually lose it, and this slide shows you that. There's basically three forms of lactase or milk malabsorption problem. One is a congenital form where infants are born without the ability to digest it at all and problems start right at the time of birth. The second one which is more common is what I just described that as we grow into adults we lose the ability to digest milk. That's the primary form. Third form is a form that we transiently get when we have a gut infection of a viral gastroenteritis or things like that, but we tend to recover from it. The diagnosis can be made by either avoiding milk and seeing if the symptoms improve, and I have, I'll go over what the symptoms are, or we can do a breath test. The breath test is simply a way where you swallow about 50 grams of lactose that we give you. This is done in our office and then you blow into a bag and we measure if you're able to break down that milk. As you can see on this graph, if you don't have the ability to digest milk, you can see the hydrogen in the breath, which is that solid line that is going up on the slide. Symptoms that one can have from lactose malabsorption include diarrhea, bloating, discomfort, which can be in other conditions too. So therefore, we just have to be able to uh, think about this and group the symptoms. So it's mostly the bloating gas uh, discomfort which can start after milk, but so, so can those symptoms be with other conditions as well. Here are some practical tips. Number one, even though one may have lactase or lactose malabsorption problems, you can still tolerate a small amount of milk if it's spaced through the day, about 250 milliliters or a cup of milk, if it's done in small amounts. The second aspect of it is that milk from mammalian milk, such as uh, cow's milk or buffalo milk or goat's milk, all will have lactose. The only lactose-free forms include soy or almond milk third aspect of it that I want us to remember is that milk contains a lot of calcium so if one is able to, one is cutting back on milk we need to make sure that there's some calcium supplementation the last tip is that sometimes fermented milk or fermented yogurt because they have bacteria in it that already break down the lactose before we ingest it can be of some help in mitigating this problem Thank you uh, for joining us with Coffee with Ravi. I hope you'll join us next week and we'll talk about probiotics.